So digital product passport is basically yeah the uh, the new system uh, under ESPR or yeah mainly under ESPR for the for the electronic sharing of of information on on environmental sustainability in order to uh, yeah to 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 promote uh, the uh, the idea of the the circular economy and also the idea of a, a digital economy. So this uh, digital product passport in the future. It will relate to a specific, uh, to a physical product, and the access to the information uh, will be enabled through a, a data carrier and um, a, a corresponding, a unique identifier. So here, uh, I still like to show the uh, the nice illustration which was once provided by by the European Commission uh, on this. Uh, um, yeah, the the operating logic of the the digital product passport. So uh, there are still many open questions uh, as regards this passport, um, and I can only answer very few today, to be honest, um, because main questions are still to be identified and to be regulated in, in future uh, acts uh, by the Commission. Um, this concerns, for example, the, the granularity of the uh, of the information that you have to include in the passport. Uh, it may be, um, yeah, the information may be required at the item level, the batch level, or the the model, the product model level. So this uh, this is still to be, uh, this is still to be determined for for each product which is being addressed. Um, also, um, the question which information uh, will be actually mandatory in the DPP is also something that that has to be uh, specified in in the product delegated acts in the future and also the important question of of access rights so uh, which stakeholders will have access to which uh, type or which level of information uh, about the product um, this is also to be uh, addressed in the future and here we will have a division in the future between a pro public data about the product and uh, restricted uh, data, uh, which with with very limited or no no accessibility. Um, now, what was still added in the in the uh, agreement by the by the co-legislators, comparing to the Commission proposal, was first of all the uh, uh, so-called web portal uh, for dig digital product passports. Um, so this comes next to the the uh, DPP registry, which is already foreseen in the in the Commission uh, proposal, and the web portal will basically be then, a, um, as I understand, a channel to, to for stakeholders to access uh, publicly available uh, information about the uh, about the products for which DPPs are are required and available. And also what has been added by the co-legislators is the, the role of a so-called certified independent third-party DPP service provider who would, uh, so like a, a service provider who would store, for example, a, a backup a copy of the, the DPP, um, which may be, for example, then useful in case the, the economic operator is, is, uh, is going out uh, of business. So, and we should also keep in mind uh, that um, uh, the DPP is not only uh, relevant for, for, for the eco design for sustainable products regulation, but also many other pieces of, uh, of EU uh, legislation uh, are uh, relying on the uh, DPP, like the batteries regulation, um, and then some, some others which, which are mentioned here. So therefore, this is really a big undertaking also for the Commission uh, to put in place like generic requirements, systemic requirements for digital product passport. But keep in mind that many aspects will then later on also be uh, product specific, especially as regards the, the information requirements. Now, what is the relationship with existing uh, mandatory reporting obligations? So, looking especially at CLP and REACH here. So, um, as most of you will know, we have um, under CLP uh, the, the hazard driven labels for substances uh, and mixtures. 
Um, we also have under reach uh, the, the, the safety data sheet, which is uh, more looking not only at the hazards, but also at the, at the uses, so to ensure the safe use of, of chemicals. Uh, and then for, uh, for articles and complex objects supplied, we have on the one hand, the, the Article 33 uh, communication, and there's a, a distinction between uh, whether you supply um, the article to, to consumers or to, uh, to economic operators. And so this is REACH and CLP, and then we have uh, since, uh, since 2018, or a few years later, taking into account the implementation, also the SKIP database, uh, which um, which is a bit uh, as an obligation uh, linked to Article 33 uh, of REACH, and so that's also a requirement which is now uh, existing in place to be complied with by by article suppliers, and it will not go away anytime soon, at least not because of the the ESPR. Um, so now. Um, the DPP can be considered for the time being as a as a complementary uh, tool uh, to be uh, introduced uh, for uh, regulated products uh, subject to to delegated acts, and which will then set out specific uh, information requirements, uh, including also for substances of concern. Um, in relation now, uh, for example, to skip, uh, ESPR highlights that um, when feasible. Uh, the Commission should link uh, the product passport uh, to existing union databases, and here Skip is mentioned as a, as an example. So some kind of interaction is uh, should should be uh, explored uh, if possible, but it's not sure today how how that would work. Mm -hmm.